This might be the most important video I've ever made. At least to me. Many of you might not have been aware that I am a Christian. Not like I've tried to hide it or anything, there just haven't been very many chances for me to talk about it on my channel yet. But today I wanted to take a good look at my favorite video game of all time, Undertale, and see how its messages compare to what I believe to be truth. As in capital T, truth. As in the Bible. Of course, I do know that the game's creator, Toby Fox, is not a Christian, and so none of these connections were intentional, and most of these things I point out will obviously not be uniquely Christian ideas. And yet, I believe that Christians should call attention to anywhere that truth can be found, while also rejecting aspects of those things that go against the truth. And I can tell you that it shines beautifully all throughout Undertale. Before we start, I do want to make it clear that I am making this video for a class, and so I will be getting an actual grade on it, but I promise you that this particular video idea was 100% my own, and that every word in this script represents my actual views. Uh, and if anyone from my class is watching this, hi, welcome to my channel. And to my subscribers, I know you already know a lot about Undertale, but since this video isn't just for you, I will be explaining a lot about the game that many of you probably already know. And also, huge spoiler warning since analyzing the game's messages means talking about its entire plot. Seriously, if anyone watching this hasn't played the game, go pause the video and do it right now. It's fun, it's super accessible, it's cheap, it's not that hard, it's short. Heck, you can even watch a playthrough of the game if you don't want to play it yourself. Are they gone? Alright, let's begin. It's pretty well known in the Undertale community that Toby Fox's ideas for the game began with the battle system, so that's where we'll start as well. Unlike your average RPG, you have the option to solve every encounter in the game without using violence. I don't think I have to explain to anyone why that's a good thing. Going around stabbing people is usually frowned upon regardless of your religion. But where things really start to get interesting is the fact that this is a choice. You can still choose to kill the monsters you fight, even the bosses who are all fully fleshed out characters. And yes, every time a monster's health bar drops to zero, they die. Something that many players found out the hard way during the first boss fight. As you can probably imagine, murdering prominent characters can drastically change the game's narrative. Killing someone you've grown attached to throughout your journey can reveal things about the characters that you would have not known otherwise and make the story and world feel even more fully realized. And so, Undertale quickly starts to become a deconstruction of player curiosity versus guilt. Now, of course, I'm not gonna sit here and say that killing someone in a video game because you wanted to see what happens makes you a bad person in real life. That's not the point. I'm just trying to set some groundwork here before we get to the main point of this video. As a little side note, a lot of games that are known for emphasizing player choice do so through different dialogue options, but funny enough, Undertale almost goes out of its way to show you that the few dialogue options you're given throughout the game actually have zero impact on the overall story. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that in a bit, just keep it in your mind. A while ago, I watched a review of Undertale that called the game a little overrated, which fair opinions are opinions. But one of the reasons this person gave was that they didn't like the fact that killing even a single monster locks you out of the best ending, because they believe in forgiveness. And I just had to stop for a second and be like, did we, D did we play the same game here? Forgiveness is one of the core themes of Undertale's narrative, and while well, again not being a uniquely Christian idea, forgiveness is also one of the core aspects of the Christian life. God forgave us of our many sins because Jesus paid the price for them on the cross, and we are called to extend forgiveness to others in turn. I don't think there's a better example of forgiveness in this game than the first two bosses still believing in you in their final moments while they're literally about to die by your hand. Oh wait, there is a better example. This is your final spoiler warning, by the way, I'm about to spoil the best plot twist in the game. If you do get to the end of the game without killing a single monster, 
you unlock what has come to be known as the true pacifist ending, which gives you the game's third, big air quotes, dating segment, a new lore-filled area to explore, and, most importantly, a new final boss. The game's main antagonist, a literally soulless flower who calls himself, uh, Flowey, absorbs the souls of every monster in the underground, revealing his true form as the former prince of the monsters, Azriel Dreamer. Throughout the battle, the souls inside Azriel help him to remember how to feel again, until finally he gives up and apologizes for the things he did as Flowey. Then, the game presents you with two options. Forgive and do not. Flowey killed so many people. He killed someone who you might have tried to spare in a previous timeline. He even tried to kill you at the beginning of the game. And yet, knowing full well that dialogue options will likely not change the actual outcome of this encounter, I have not seen a single person online who did not choose to forgive Azriel on their first playthrough. I just... I don't know what more I can say about that. It speaks for itself. It's just so powerful. Okay, but if forgiveness is such a core theme in Undertale, then what about the thing with being locked out of the true pacifist ending for killing a single monster? Well, despite forgiveness, sin still has consequences. And as Paul says in Romans 6 verses 1 and 2, just because we are forgiven does not mean it's okay for us to continue sinning. In fact, it says that those of us who have been saved have died to sin. And yes, God's forgiveness does clear us of all guilt for our past sins, but it's just the natural order of things that doing bad things will often have some natural consequences, even if that's not in the form of actual punishment, or judgment to put it in Undertale's terms. Like in Undertale, every monster you come across is a sentient being. If you kill one of them, you have committed murder in that world. That's going to have some repercussions, whether you're forgiven or not. Heck, even Azriel, despite being forgiven, doesn't get a happy ending. He releases all the souls inside him to free the monsters from the underground, then goes back to being a soulless flower. Now I want to step away from the game's main themes for a bit and talk about what some may consider to be a big point of contention, the ethics of Undertale giving players the option to commit genocide. Like I just said, every monster you see is a sentient being, an actual resident of the underground. So, what happens when a player starts level grinding? What happens if you kill and kill until there's no one left? What happens is that the game fully embraces that you're on a murderous rampage and changes completely. A kill counter appears on every save point in each subsequent area, and as long as you continue to fulfill that, you are now on what has come to be called the genocide or no mercy route. I think it makes sense for a game like Undertale to include a route like this. In fact, I think it's actually pretty brilliant from a game design perspective. But where it starts to trip me up a bit is the fact that, in a way, the game rewards this morbid curiosity. One of the best ways to flesh out characters in any story is to put them in unexpected situations, and making each one of them face an unstoppable serial killer about to one-shot them definitely falls under that category. And nowhere is this more true than with the characters who have route-exclusive boss fights, which also happen to be the hardest and most well-designed fights in the game. And on top of all that, there's a huge dump of route-exclusive lore at the end that's so important that it almost makes me want to say that someone has not fully experienced this game's story until they have played this route. Of course, the counter-argument to all this is that the game tells you over and over again to stop doing what you're doing and gives you plenty of opportunities to do so. Not to mention making you feel really bad for doing it, and even calling out people who just watch someone else do it online because they can't bring themselves to do it, but still want to know what happens. And I know that's the point, again going back to the idea of player guilt versus curiosity, but I can't help but wonder if a line has been crossed here. And I know it's just a game, and that doing bad things doesn't equate to doing bad things in real life, and I myself have actually done the genocide route several times, but still, 
Again, it's just the fact that the game kind of rewards you for doing this that makes me unsure about it. I, I don't really have a definitive answer for this, and I didn't even do a great job of tying it into Christian stuff, but I still wanted to bring it up and maybe get some discussion going. Honestly, that about covers everything I wanted to say about Christian ideas in Undertale. But there is one thing that I feel like I need to address, that especially for some Christians who have played Undertale, might be a bit of an elephant in the room, and that is the homosexual representation. I honestly don't have a lot to say about it in Undertale specifically, but I still figured I should get my views on it out there. First of all, I want to make it absolutely clear that I do not hate anyone who has different views about this than I do. And the absolute last thing I want to do with this video is hurt someone. I understand why you believe what you believe. Personally, I believe in a god who actively rules over the world, who is the embodiment of goodness and love, and who has made it clear through the Bible that having same-sex relations is not the way that things are meant to be. Of course, if you don't believe in this god, then the way I see it, it makes perfect sense for you to believe that practicing homosexuality is okay. In fact, if anyone watching this doesn't believe in god, but does believe homosexuality is wrong, uh, why? J just why? <laughs> And uh, if there are any Christians who don't believe homosexuality is wrong, that's a discussion for another day, I guess. I would love to have some civil discussions about all this down in the comments, though. Let's all be nice to each other while talking about this sensitive topic. So yeah, Undertale has a homosexual relationship that's treated as a good thing. I don't agree with it, but I completely understand why it's there and won't let it get in the way of my enjoyment of the game or anything. The relationship in question actually has a lot of other good themes like self-love involved in there too, even if I'm not the biggest fan of Alfie's as a character. But I love Undyne, she's in like my top three characters in the game. But I think that about does it. I'm sure there's a lot more that could be said about this topic, and again, let's talk about all this in the comments, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, this is all I could think of at the moment, so that's what you got. Thank you all for watching this and sticking around until the end of the video, and I would really love to hear some feedback since I've never really made a video like this before. I haven't really been super active on my channel at all lately, but hopefully that will change after I graduate. Of course, that will depend on what kind of job I get and how much energy I'll have left for YouTube, but I really want to try and be more active here soon. I have ideas for Undertale and Kingdom Hearts videos as usual, I gotta say though, it was really hard trying to write an Undertale video right after Kingdom Hearts 4 was announced. But yeah, feel free to subscribe if you think you might be interested in that, and I'll see you in one of those videos or whichever video of mine you choose to watch next. Bye!